Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Unbox Your Gift podcast. I'm your host, Rita Joyan. This podcast is all about how to turn that thing you love to do, that thing that lights you up, that thing called your passion and how to turn that into a profession. And I'm super excited because I want to speak about a specific question today that I was asked. And I really want my audience, my listeners to hear this because I think it's the biggest fallacy when you're going after turning your passion into a profession. And that is, the question was, how does motivation lead to success? How does motivation lead to success? Now, the question is assuming that motivation does lead to success. Now, what I want you to know is that motivation is the entry into anything. Motivation is the entry. So when you decide to want to get married, when you start a business, to have kids, to become a writer, become a producer, to uh, change destinations, to travel, to have a career change, whatever you decide to do, it's instigated by an emotion. And that motion, emotion is usually motivation. You feel like you have to do something, make a change, create a movement, accelerate something, de-accelerate something. There is a change that's about to happen and it's caused by a motivation. That, that decision is instigated by motivation. You're moved to make that decision. Now, that's your entry into the park. That's your entry into it, into the game. What's going to allow you and I to sustain success, happiness, realize our passion, whatever the goal is, to stay married, to be happily married, to have great kids, to have time for our kids, to be able to complete a degree, to start a degree, to become a writer, to become a calligrapher, whatever the goal is, the entry is the decision that, yes, this is what I want to do. But to maintain the decision and to be able to score a goal, and that goal is to live in happiness, to live in success, whatever that is, long-term, it's created by two things. It's created by a schedule of discipline and it's created by managing emotions. There's two main things because of all the people, and if you can go back and listen to all the people that I've interviewed on the podcast series, and I look at myself and I look at every other person on the planet who has achieved, and achievement could be raising beautiful kids, achievement could be uh, creating a charity, achievement could be uh, becoming a teacher, achievement could be changing careers and was a psychologist and now is a blogger. You know, achievement is anything that makes you happy and gives you knowing that your work contributes to humanity in some way, contributes to you, your family and the greater good. And so what I've realized as having seen so many people on this podcast or spoken to them and interviewed them, and when I look at around myself, motivation is not what's going to make anything happen. Because if you're waiting for motivation, you're going to wait a long time and motivation is going to be dependent hugely upon how you feel. And what I'm asking you to do, what I invite you do, to do, and for myself, because God knows, like I don't have this down pat, but what I'm focusing on in my year. 2019 goal is to take away and replace the notion that motivation is what creates success but what really does is a schedule of discipline and the ability to manage your emotions because all we do is based on emotion when you feel like you want to do something achieve a goal it's based on how you feel it's your emotion but to achieve it to realize it to bring it to fruition requires more than just a feeling it requires the discipline to do the boring, day in, day out, routine work that many people, like, like I, didn't, I didn't know that when I was at school. I didn't know that when I was at university, that it required a strict uh, focal focus on a, uh, on a disciplined schedule. I didn't know it focused on managing my mind, managing my emotions. I didn't know that. I came across all of this while I started working and doing my own thing because you... For a long time, I was able to get by without it because really I was working for someone else. I was working in corporate. Um, everything wasn't based on me. Everything didn't rely on me and it didn't really matter that much. But what I find that the biggest, the biggest turning point is when you turn your passion into a profession, you learn so much about yourself. You learn about what triggers you, what overwhelms you, what frustrates you. What is it that makes you excited? What makes you feel low? And to know how to manage all of that. 
Because I used to think once upon a time, it's great that when I get on a high, like when I feel really excited about a project or something, I get really high. And then when I have my lows, when something doesn't work out or is not going the right way or there's, a, there's some bad news that I have a really deep low. And those are bad emotions. You can't be on a high high and a low low because that's like a thermometer. That's like a roller coaster up and down, up and down. It's just not right for the human psyche. The human psyche needs as close as as close as possible to just feeling at equilibrium. Although it's, it's a hard balance, I get that, but that extreme high and extreme low creates a, a seesaw of emotion that is like, it's like being seasick. Like you just get sick. It's just, it's unsustainable, especially turning a passion into a profession. And so what I invite you to do, and I, I work on this on myself, is I'm looking at how to manage my emotion. So let me give you an example. I was having breakfast with my husband on Sunday. My husband's in real estate and he's always working. Even when we are quote unquote having a, some time off, he is working. And he's usually working on his phone, replying to an email, um, uploading a post or uh, checking out times, uploading, like just, just working pretty much all the time. And we were having breakfast on Sunday and I asked him, can you not use your phone because I'd like to have breakfast? And now I say this to him all the time. Now remember, motivation is the entry point. So I'm motivated. It's a Sunday morning. I'd like to have breakfast. I spend some quality time with my husband. And I say to him, can you please not use your phone? And he's like, look, I've got to reply to this one email. It's urgent. I've got to reply. And he starts to reply. Now, usually I'm like, can you get off the phone? Like you promised me that you're going to get, and I could have gotten frustrated, which I usually do and overwhelmed. Like, come on, this is not fair. Like, like, but at the end of the day, what I know is how I am off field is how, what will become of me on field. So if off field, behind the scenes, if I'm frustrated and I build a, a pattern of frustration and overwhelm and rah, rah, even though I might be quote unquote right, it doesn't make a difference because I think I was right. Can you please not use your phone while I'm having breakfast? Like I think that's not a bad thing to ask. But even though if I got self-righteous about myself like I usually had and just kind of huffed and puffed and got frustrated, I wouldn't have got very far. I would have just you know, kind of ruined the morning and said, you know, blah, 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 blah. But what I did is something very different because you have to manage my mind. Remember, I'm still a work in progress on this myself and I'm sharing with you an experience that helped me in hearing it. You can hopefully project yourself into this experience and see how you can manage your own mind or manage your own emotions. So I'm speaking. Um, so he takes out his phone and he starts replying to this email um, for, for his work. And usually I would get my phone out and I would just start replying to an email myself because he's on the phone. So I'll reply to an email. I'll check my emails. I'll check post on social media. I'll go flick through for social media. But what I just realized is I don't want to be getting dopamine hits. Like I don't want my phone to be a dopamine hit for my brain because I'm conditioning my brain that when I get frustrated or I get overwhelmed or if I think it doesn't work out that I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to grab my phone. And I'm just going to go like that's the wrong psychology to have. Because how you play off field is how I'm going to come to work. Because if something, because it happens at a subtle level, habits translate to different areas of our life in very subtle ways. And if I allow this to overcome me, then it's going to overcome in different aspects of my working life as well. I may not realize it because it happens on a very subtle level, but it would happen. And I need to know, be aware of my behavior and be conscious of it, right? Because I'm trying to play to live an optimum life. I'm trying to play to have the most optimum life possible. And that comes with my mind. It doesn't come with my goal. It doesn't come with how I get to a goal. It does, that doesn't even exist if my mind is playing up on me, if I can't even control my mind. So I'm trying to get some control over myself. So I'll have control over my mind. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, um, I decided not to pick up my phone. And just you know, I had a book in my bag. I had a book and I took out the book. And I took out the book because I wanted to just occupy my time rather than just look around the shop, like, you know, like, I don't know, like blankly. I just wanted to, con you know, to feed my mind. So I took out this book and I started to read. And by doing that, my husband was like, oh no, she's reading a book. Oh my gosh, she's going to take a long time reading the book. I better hurry up. So he's hurrying up because I can see that he's typing faster now, and um, which is a good thing. But I'm now getting really involved into this book. And this book is a, called Grit. The book is called Grit and I'm reading about a study about how high school kids or just kids in general who have done well in school, usually when they leave school, find it harder to be grit, to be gritty, to, you know, to persevere. Only because 
those kids who struggled in school, when they leave school, they are more grittier. They're more um, open to be resilient and to persevere through challenges because they've had to do that during school. They've already built the muscle. They've got some muscle mass for grit after finishing school. And so those who have done well in school, they, didn't, they kind of struggled outside of school because they didn't have that struggle in the beginning. So they have no idea what this all is. They don't have that same muscle mass as the other kids who, didn't, who did struggle at school. So I was reading this study and I was like really into it. And then my, fa- my husband finished his um, writing the email. He put his phone away and then I put my book away. And I put my book away and I started talking to him about what I just read, about this study, about how fascinating it was, about how this makes sense and that makes sense. And we were just exchanging a conversation around this study, which was so, like it was just a refreshing and what, I, what had occurred to me is in that moment, I was able to shift, I did it unconsciously, but I was able to shift my thinking from, this is frustrating, we decided to do something and he's not doing that. But going from that mindset to managing my emotion. So now I was in control once again of myself rather than allowing myself to be led down a garden path of frustration of, of feeling let down or, you know, it's not fair or anything like that. Or any like those like... Emotions that's not going to serve me because at the end of the day, it's about me, how I manage my brain. And I'm sharing, I'm sharing this with you specifically because hopefully this makes a difference for you. Where, are, how are you showing up when you're not on the on your passion? Like when you're not working on your passion, when you're having breakfast with your um, husband, wife, when you are with your kids, when you're with your when you're, with, when you're doing anything other than your passion, how are you showing up? Because, and how are you, how's your thinking going? Because that is going to translate on field. And when you're waiting for motivation, because I wasn't motivated in that moment to be all loving and caring. Oh, okay, you've got another email to write. Yeah, it's always the case. Because it's always the case. It's always got another email to write. But I didn't want to get into that high horse. I'm only just being comical when I'm making that voice right now. But I want to get in comical just to... To just to kind of communicate the fact that I just feel good. I just feel good. I didn't feel frustrated. I didn't feel overwhelmed. And that's how I wanted to show up all the time. Like I managed my own mind because nothing he did changed. Nothing my husband did changed. He was still on the phone. He was still writing the email. It was still urgent because it's always urgent. But for me, I didn't let that allow that bother me in this instance because I found something else. I broke my own pattern is what I'm saying. And by breaking my own pattern, I was able to manage my own mind. So I wasn't reliant on expecting my husband to do something that I wanted him to do. And if he wasn't going to do that, and it was not fair because we had a Sunday morning, we both agreed, no phones, and here he is on his phone, and I got to get frustrated. And I didn't allow that to create frustration inside of me because at the end of the day, it's just going to affect me. And how I show up off field is how I'm going to show up on field. And it was a huge aha moment for me. Because I could have been all right about it. I could have been like, oh, you know, I, I am in the right. I should, he should not be doing this. Here. No, but that's not the point. The point is always how do I manage my mind, even though forgetting what else is happening around me. I have to f- somehow find a way. And that's the prerequisite I find, that when you're turning a passion into a, prof- to a profession, the prereq is that you and I have to be able to manage our minds despite thinking we're right, despite We've said this for the umpteenth time. Despite, like, I'm playing by the rules, why can't he or she play by the rules? You know, you have to find a way because that's how passion operates. Passion operates in the ways that we don't expect it to. Passion doesn't evolve the way we want it to. It will take us to a different path. That's how the evolution of passion happens. The evolution of our work and our contribution happens. But we have to be open to allowing those opportunities to come. And the only way we can be open for our passion leading us to to one step, to another opportunity, to another opportunity, is when we allow to manage our own mind. And by no step a stretch of the imagination have I mastered this. I am a student, a work in progress, and I will be for the day till the day that I die to manage my mind around this. But I I, want to really bring this into focus Because I was asked the question this morning, how does passion or how does motivation lead to success? And the truth is, I don't know anyone who's just had pure motivation, like have gone on motivation. You think of anyone that you admire, anyone that you admire, just think for a moment. Do you admire your grandmother, your mother, your auntie, your boss, 
um, a tennis player, an, an, an athlete, a, uh, I don't know, a doctor, who do you admire? Are they always motivated? Like, are they always like, they have, I can guarantee you, they learn to manage their mind and they learn to be able to have a schedule that gives them optimum strength, that gives them the discipline to keep going day in, day out. So, for example, if your goal is to get married, you're motivated to get married. That's a decision. That's entry level. Remember, the entry level is the motivation, the decision to get married. Well, once you're in a marriage, guess what? Sometimes you're not motivated to do a lot of things. So that, that comes managing your mind, like I just explained to you. Managing my mind in that instance, in that small significant moment that leads to so much more decision making throughout the day, the week, the month, right? That if I had littered my head with frustration and always gone to that uh, place of frustration, then anything I do after that, would, I would always habitually go to frustration. You know, even though it was just in that instance with my husband, but if I allow myself to indulge in frustration and I am right, well, then I'm going to lead that in towards my work and my contribution and that's going to be taken away. Did you get what I'm saying here? And so if you talk about having kids, I mean, if someone's motivated to have kids, they make a decision to have kids. Now that's motivated, you know, you're motivated, you might go buy some kids' clothes and a pram and a car seat and all that and then the kid comes. And then when you've been up all day and, and, and the kid cries at 2 a.m. in the morning wanting a feed, you're not motivated really to get up after you've been up all day cooking and cleaning and looking after the kids and then 2 a.m. to give them a feed. Where's the motivation there? And then if you want to lose weight, for example, and you're looking to lose, and that's it, I've made a decision to lose weight, I'm motivated, entry level. Now we're on the playing field. Now we've got to actually go day in, day out, eat good foods, move more, eat greens, uh, control meal portions and then someone says to you you know what from work someone says to you i've i know where the where the best cheesecake is like i know where the, and they it's the the last in stock they're not going to have any more stock ever again and this is the last of them and you've got to try one because this is like once so do you make the decision to try this once in a lifetime cheesecake or do you stick to your losing weight and your commitment the discipline and what you're calling on is not motivation you're calling on the discipline at 2 a.m. in the morning when the kid's crying, you're calling on the discipline and managing your mind. When you're in a marriage and things aren't working out and you're not, your expectations aren't being met, you're not being really motivated, you know what I mean, to, to try and get through the other side. You're trying to get manage your own mind so it doesn't accelerate, the situation doesn't like blow over so that you manage yourself, that you don't say something you don't mean, that you just, you know what I mean, you're managing your mind. You have a discipline. You're not going to be rude or abrupt or all that stuff. When um, someone decides that they want to uh, train for the Olympics, for example, you know, like that's a decision. I am now going to train. I'm going to sacrifice whatever type friendships and time off and to just train. And then you get into it. And then it's like the third week and you're waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning because that's the time you need to wake up to be able to be in the gym and train or whatever the training is. And it's more training than what you thought. It's more work than what you thought. And, and then thoughts come to you like, am I worth this? Can I do this? Can I, am I cut out for all this work? And the hard training that's involved and those internal dialogues come up. Can I do this? Is it worth it? Am I going to get anywhere? Am I even going to make it to the Olympics? I'm putting so much time in. Am I even going to make it? I mean, so much. There are other people that are better than me, more skilled than me, more athletic than me. And those thoughts, each of us experience. And it's, where's motivation there? Like, where's motivation when you need it? Motivation's not there when you need it. But what is there and what we need to work on, and that's why my 2019 goal is to replace the word motivation with discipline, a strategy or a schedule of discipline and managing our emotions. Because when we have a, a schedule, well, whether I think I can do it or I can't do it, whether I think that someone else got more skill than me, I've got to keep to my schedule. And then managing the mind comes in. Well, what do I have to believe? What do I have to do? What do I have got to get myself to do? Who do I got to talk to to change my mind? When we can get into the habit of managing our mind and putting a schedule in place, I believe that the success that we achieve is a huge personal high. It's a personal success. I remember listening to one of the yeah, my interviewees that um, – that was talking to me and he had gone to a swimming pool at 6 a.m. in the morning and 
these kids aged from about eight to I think it was 12 or 13, I can't recall. But at six o'clock in the morning, there was this huge bunch of kids training. And the guy asked um, the, the pool the coach who was there monitoring and supervising the kids swimming. And why are all these kids in the pool at 6 a.m. in the morning? Like, what are they doing? He's like, well, actually, they are training to one day be able to make it to the Olympics. He's like, at 6 a.m. in the morning, these are kids aged between 8 and 13, and they're looking to make it to the Olympics. He's like, yeah, and they, they train five days a week at 6 a.m. in the morning. First thing in the morning, they're in the pool, they go to school, and then they come back for practice after school. And so the guy asked the coach, what are the percentages? Like, what is the percentage of all of these guys or how many of these, these guys do you predict that might have a chance of not even winning a medal at the Olympics but making it on the team of the Olympic swimming team? Like, what are the chances of the Australian swimming team, which is – you know, pretty high standard, what are the chances of these kids? Like how many of them would make it to get into the Olympic Games, let alone win a medal? He said, well, probably only one or two or three maximum would be able to, out of all these kids that are swimming in the pool right now, would be able to get into, um, entry into the Olympics. And so the guy said, well, then why would, that's really interesting. But the coach said, but the discipline that they will learn waking up at six o'clock in the morning, being in the pool. I mean, it wasn't just waking up at six o'clock in the morning, being in the pool at 6 a.m., like being in the pool at six, then going to school, then coming back for another practice session, five days a week, and then after practice session, finishing homework. Like the discipline that they will learn, they will take that for the rest of their lives into whatever that they do. So those that don't make it, in other words, the coach was saying, the, the kids that won't make it, they're going to learn a skill set, a discipline, how to manage their mind, how to break through when they don't want to do something. They will learn the fundamental skills so that anything they choose to do, they will be better off. They will have more grit, more perseverance, more resilience than someone who has not experienced what they do because they will know work ethic. They will know discipline. They will know how to be able to overcome frustration and overwhelm and comparison when someone's got more skill than they have, think they've got less and what training they have to do to, they will, they've already come across that. Which is similar to the study that I was reading in this book called Grit. And it was saying that how school students who would do really well at school struggle with grit, like the actual grit, because things came easy to them at school. Um, because they were able to understand maths and English and history and geography better. But those who struggled with those subjects, uh, because they had to have grit, they have to somehow survive in school, they're able to survive a lot better after school because, well, they had no other option, right? So my point is that the fact that we can recruit these skill sets of managing our emotions and being able to have a, a discipline or a schedule of discipline whether or not we achieve the goal or not is really, is great. But what we gain as a personal development is so much more. What we gain in personal development is so much more. And that's what I want to leave you with. I want to leave you with what is it within you that in whatever you're doing off, off the field, how are you showing up? Are you getting frustrated? Are you getting a bit narky? Are you getting a bit like snappy? Are you getting a bit... What, like, the behavior that you feel that you wish you could change and then get curious about the behavior. Don't beat yourself up. Get curious about the behavior. Why, what triggers it? And when you find what triggers it, say, like, okay, so what do I need to do to change that around? Because that's, oh, that's the only thing that I did, that I sat in that coffee shop. I didn't want to look at my phone because I didn't want a dopamine hit because uh, that's what we'll do every time I get frustrated. I'm just training my brain to look at my phone. And I, I, I don't want that. I don't want to get frustrated over that. And I don't want to get frustrated and have a dopamine fit, fit, hit. So I take a book out. I start to read a book that I'm really interested in. I get really deep into that passage. And then I close the book and I share my findings. And that really changed my, my thinking. It really made a difference. But I got curious about it. I didn't beat myself up by myself over it. And it's the same thing for you. You need to get curious about what triggers it and then how you're going to get around it that's going to serve you. That's really going to serve you. And serve you as in serve your soul, as in uplift you, 
as in make you feel alive, as in make you feel happy, as in make you feel that, yeah, that you matter. But only you can do that. You can't rely on anybody else to do that. Only you can do that. So if you were ever thinking that you're waiting for motivation, if you're waiting to have some inspiration, please, please know, please know that it's not motivation that you lack. Motivation is just a decision. Once you make a decision, what you're really playing with, the partnership that you want to make now, is not to wait for another burst of motivation, although that's nice. But what will be with you long-term in partnership for the rest of our lives together is how we manage our emotions and how scheduling our discipline, how we show up, when we show up, a routine of discipline that we do day in, day out, even when it gets boring, even when we get tired, even when we think we can't do it, even though we think someone else is better than us, even though we think we lack something, that's discipline. Managing our mind is part of it. So wherever you are, wherever in the world, wherever in the world you are, my message to you in today's podcast is, Please replace the word motivation. My invitation is please replace the word motivation to looking at how you're going to schedule your time, what things you need to do every single day to translate that passion into a profession and how you're going to manage your mind. And by the way, guys, if you have found this podcast helpful, please go ahead and share it with someone. Please tag someone. Please share the link with someone because what we do collectively is what makes the biggest of differences. If you know someone who is waiting for motivation, if you know someone who is demotivated, if you know someone that beats themselves up all the time, if you know that person who can't seem to make a decision or is waiting for inspiration or can't seem to pinpoint their passion, give them the link of this podcast. Give them this link. If you know someone who gets frustrated or overwhelmed, give them the link because you will allow them to be able to gain insight into themselves. It'll be through you that they gain insight and it's just your way of helping. And if you, this has helped you, then please re-listen to this podcast because that's how we all learn. I'm someone else's student. As much as I come and I on this podcast and I broadcast, I too am someone else's student that I learn from and anything I can gauge from what I learn and that I can implement I can then extrapolate all the important bits and give it to you like I am on this podcast right now. So if you found this helpful, please go ahead and share it. And also, I would love if you could write a review. If you could tell me what you think of this podcast, what your thoughts are, what you'd like to learn more about, what you'd like to listen more to, who would you like me to have on this podcast series, um, the Unbox Your Gift podcast, turning their passion into a profession, who would you like to hear from? Please let me know. And it'll be my absolute privilege and honor to be able to really serve the needs of what my listeners are. And you are my listener listening right now. I thank you so much for your time. I thank you for listening. I thank you for your attention. And most of all, I thank you for managing your mind while you're listening to this and getting your, your head around all the stuff that I'm telling you because it's really coming from my heart and giving it to yours. With love and an ocean of gratitude. Have a beautiful morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world.